Right, this is day 10. Um, what we're going to do is Saturday, so we're just literally going to board the internal of this room. Um, so we're going to combine, and we're going home early, so we're going to combine day 10 with day 11, which will be Monday. So we'll probably, like, you know, nearly a day's work in there. Been asked a few times how long we're actually spending on site. But what you've got to remember is it's not a race to see how quickly we can get it done. It's actually just about how we can get it done on my own. Um, somebody says, what time do we start? We start about anywhere between eight to half past. And what time do we go home? Um, the earliest we've gone home is about one o'clock in it, Davey, I think. Yeah, um, and sometimes maybe two o'clock or half past. So that's what we've been doing. Um, so basically, I'm gonna start with this wall here. Now, if you remember our roof pitches, it goes from front to back to allow the rainfall. So this part of the building here is actually higher than that part there. I'll just get my tape measure out. Pop these down. Right, so. The boards are 1.2, so the 1.2 falls exactly half on that stud there. So what we'll do, we'll take that measurement there, we'll take that measurement there, we'll transfer it onto a board, we'll cut the top of the board at pitch like that, and then we'll lift it up. We're also going to make the board 20 mil um, shorter than the height of the building. Um, the reason for that is because what we want on our build, um, if that's our wall and that's our floor, so what we'll do, we'll put our plasterboard 20 mil higher than the floor, and then when we put our flooring down, we'll still leave the manufacturer's 10 mil gap or whatever they ask us to leave, but we'll also have the additional 12 and a half mil thickness of the plasterboard. So that bit there will be almost 25 mil, give or take. Um, so if there's any movement in that floor whatsoever, it will actually slide under the plasterboard as well. So that's it. Um, another little thing I'm gonna do there now, I'm just gonna go along and I'm going to mark the centre of the studs all the way along the room. And then when I do plasterboard that and get the board up to the ceiling, I can see exactly where the studs are and where I need to fix them. So um, I showed you how to cut plasterboards in one of the other videos. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to put on time lapse. I'm going to get this board wall, uh, this wall boarded. Um, and then I'm going to move all them plasterboards over there. I'll do this back wall. This back wall is just a straight cut because obviously that's level. And then I'll jump on this window wall um, and I'll show you how I'm going to cut these windows out as well. I'll show you how I'm going to mark up where this socket goes. And customers ask us, can we put another papyrus or two in the bottom of there because he's going to have a floating TV unit. So I'll drop you back on time lapse um, and we'll start plasterboarding. So I've started boarding these, obviously, I'm, so I'm, I'm tapering down. This back wall is a straight cut. If David just sees there, look. So you remember I put my plasterboard carriers in there, uh, uh, you know, so I've got timber both sides, which is important. So I know that cut's not the greatest, but I've made it a bit small so it can go in. That's the idea behind it. And then this next piece, which is an off cut of the board, will go tight up to that one. And that, that's, that's, the plaster will, will be happy with that now, that's a good finish. Like, so don't worry if you're not dead tight. It doesn't have to be perfectly tight going in there. But what you want to do is work your way around the room like that. So when that joint goes in there, that next board will cover any gap like you've left and so on. And when I get to that corner, again, that wall there will cover that corner. So this back wall can be cut in full pieces rather than angled. Um, if we angle it, obviously we've got to put the angle at the top or cut it with a handsaw. But if it's cut like this, we're just cutting it at the bottom with a Stanley knife to height. Um, just before I forget now. Again, we're fixing it with plasterboard screws. You can see there we've got 400 centers. You can see the rows going down there, 400 centers. And I mean, I mean, I mean they advise 300 mil, but I like to go a little bit closer than that, me. Um, obviously, too many screws and you're gonna weaken the board, but that, that's, that's a good amount in my opinion. Um, and that, that'll be it then. As long as your building's well constructed and everything's fixed together right then it'll all move as one when it does move what you don't want is a wall that's not fixed properly and that particular wall to move or plasterboards that aren't fixed properly and that particular wall again to move that's when you're going to get your cracks so that's what you want you want a good solid build plenty of screws nice and solid make sure your plaster tapes it before you screams it um obviously that's essential yeah so um we're doing the back wall so what i've actually forgotten to do is mark where my timbers are look so Obviously, I've put this board up now. I've done the perimeter of the board, but I don't know where my timbers are, but it's not the end of the world, so... I mean, I, generally what I'd do, I, I, I would guess where they are and I'd find one and start screwing down there. But what you can do as well is you can either scribe it or... I know they're 400 centers, so 
I can go like that. Mark it top and bottom. I've got a bit of a slate pattern there. Um, it'll give you like a rough estimation of where it is. It's not absolutely perfect where it is as well. Um, but like I say, what I normally do personally is just guess where it was and you'd soon find one and then know exactly where you were going with it. But so that's that's where getting around that if you've actually forgotten to mark them up, like I have on this occasion. Um, because the 400 centers on that wall, when I screw a screw in there now, it will hit a timber. Just like that. So I can screw down there now and get that all screwed. Another thing, um, if you remember, I put papyrus in this wall for the heater the other year. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna screw down the timber as I normally would like that. But what I'm also gonna do is put a series of screws just through the board just to where the papyrus is. And then if I haven't quite fixed that papyrus flush with the timbers, what I'll do, that'll do then, it'll pull that plasterboard back to the papyrus. And then when I put my bracket on, when my bracket goes back, it won't actually pull any screw heads through. So that's just another little tip for you. Um, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna finish screwing that. I'm gonna cut this board to height and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna lift the board up to the ceiling without the aid of um, plasterboard lifter. Right. Um, so next full board, I've obviously cut it to height already. So the way you want to sort of think about this is like, I'm going to cut it there, then I'm going to stand it up so the cut's going to be at the bottom like that. Um, I've probably removed maybe about three kilos of the board. So we're still, I mean the 25, so it's, let's say it's 20 kilos this board, yeah. So I've got it into position there. I'm, I'm tight up to that joint there. Now I want to lift it. Now you get a plasterboard lifter. I think they might be about 12, 13 pound. Or you can do it this way if you want to save that extra little bit of money. Um, I don't bother with a plasterboard lifter myself. So what I'm going to do is screw that one in too far. Right, so four, four screws will, will generally hold the board. Um, and then once it's held there with four screws, then you can you can let go of it basically. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my four screws ready, like that. I know it's my joint's good there, David. You see that, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to push that hand and keep pressure on the board there, because what I don't want is it to slip out past there. And I'm going to pull that side off the wall like that. You see that, David? Yeah. And I'm going to just push it up to the top. I'm pushing it tight to the frame now. Hopefully, this will work. So there were my screws already, yeah. Got them four in. It's tight to the top. Just push that there. There's a little break in that board, look. Um, that's what's let me down there, look. Let me get a bit of wood. Um, have we got a bit of wood, David? Not quite a little bit of wood, but it'll do the same trick. So I'm just going to get that up there now. Put that on there and just send it back there. So that's fine. And there, and there that, that's how you lift your board up. So it's tight to the ceiling now. I've got them four screws in there. I will now get a few more in. And then I know that I've missed the timber there. So like I say, I'll get a few in there. I know I've got a timber straight away at the top, it's the head of the wall, so if I get them in there along like that, I've got a good nice joint on that board now, happy with that, it's up. Um, so I have marked these ones as you can see, so what I'm going to do now is get a few more screws. Um, generally, so struggling with that, generally if you look where the line is, and you should be able to just gauge where it is. If I miss one, then you'll see, I'll just pull it to the side. Now, I know a lot of you don't watch the videos in sequence, or some of you don't even watch my other stuff, and a lot of you are going, why haven't you got um, a drywall gun? Well, this series is about doing it as little as possible. You need impact driver for other jobs. So, and what I'm trying to do is use the, the bare minimum. And so far we have used a definite bare minimum on this job. What we'll do when we come back on Monday, we'll, um, we'll, we'll lay all the tools out on the grass that we've used. 
and we can have a talk about them and um, we'll, we'll sort of like estimate a price for each tool as well. You know, whether you buy it new or second hand. My eyesight's crap now, so I can't actually tell if they're gone under without actually feeling them unless I put my glasses on. Well, that's it basically. So what's gonna happen now, I'm gonna carry on with that board, board in that wall, working my way that way. When I get to there, I'm gonna pull that plastic back because the customer wants an additional set of papyrases because he's gonna have a floating shelf. And then once we've got around there, we'll drop on this front wall. Again, that's easy. Um, but I'll, sh I'll show you it marking out for that so that you're not screwing into these uh, joist hangers. But that'll be it, plasterboard is ready for plasterer then. Um, and I'm gonna show you some cutting out sockets and all, which we forgot, but we've got a couple, so I'll show you as cutting out. Right, um, so the customer's requested some more practices in there because he's going to have like a wall hung TV unit. So we've got a brush plate there which is going to feed the power to the TV. Uh, the TV's quite back to the wall, so we're just going to pull it through the brush plate rather than plug it in there. We're going to drop the power lead through there and we're going to have a double socket there and we'll have the other single brush, brushed face plate socket there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take a picture of that. Um, for the simple reason is once it's boarded, I won't remember where the hole is, but what I'll be able to do then when it's boarded, I'll be able to get my picture out and reference and be able to see where my sockets are. So what I've cut out there, look, is enough for a single back box and a double back box to go in comfortably together and still for the clips to work on the Appleby back boxes. But I'll show you then when we do them. Um, and what'll happen there, we'll cut the back of that out. We'll put another one up there and cut the bottom out. So you'll be able to thread down through there to there and then pull your the, pull your um, leads out of there. So what goes on there is a face plate with like a little brush, so you, like a little brush face plate so that the leads can come out and it looks tidy. Um, and that's what we'll be doing there. So that's my practices for there. I'm now gonna reapply this um, vapor barrier and staple it down before we um, go any further with plasterboarding. But you can see now that we're starting to come to end at plasterboarding. and then it'll be time to do the sockets. But like I say, it's Saturday. Me and Davey will be going on very shortly and we haven't brought a spirit level either. So we won't be putting the back boxes in today, will we Davey? No, okay. This wall's plasterboarded. Obviously, the windows are here and here. So what I've done, I've marked up where the window is on the board. I've measured it off that wall. Um, I've also marked the side of the timber there. Um, we're going to cut them out. I'm not going to come out today because it's really windy today. I'm just trying to keep this building sealed a little bit. So I've just got this front wall to do now. What I've done, I've marked up where the joist hangers are because obviously you don't want to be screwing into them. Um, don't get me wrong, you can physically screw into them, but if you hit a nail, that ain't going to happen. So I've marked up where they are. Again, 20 mil lower, uh, 20 mil shorter rather than the wall. That's what I've cut the board to. Um, you can see there now, we're starting to get to the end of it now. <laughs> nice one, David. You won't want to tell me, will you? So, a couple of screws in that. We'll hold that in place. Um, like I say, I'm gonna get that, I'll get that fixed down there now. Um, I can see where, where my timbers are, just because I left that 20 mil gap. I can see the timber there on the bottom, so I'll screw that all the way up there. Um, and what, what I'd normally reach for then, 
is, is the multi-tool to trim this off, but obviously we haven't got the multi-tool, so I'll be using um, the handsaw, but I'll show you that. So what I'll do, I'll get that screwed, I'll put that cheek on there, then I'll infill the top there as well, and then I'll show you cutting one of them out with your handsaw. Again, we'll be cutting the windows out with the handsaw as well, and that'll be us for today then, because we haven't got spirit level to put the sockets in. Um, but then we'll sort of like jump back on Monday and you'll see us then. So time lapse again, please, David. Right, so I've put this piece of board in there, obviously it's too big. Um, like I said, I normally reach for the multi-tool, but what I'm going to do, I'll just cut this by hand. Plasterboard does really burns when it goes in your eyes, so you want to wear some eye protection. It's really windy today, so no matter where I stand, this is going to blow in my face. Right, Davey just wants to come around this side, Davey. So the top's easy enough there, I've just followed the line of that, but obviously I need to get rid of this board now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rub the saw backwards and forwards like that. Just the edge of it, so it goes through. It's gone through now. Just turn it upside down. Again, I'm just using the timber as a guide there. It doesn't matter if it's a bit ropey, a bit rough, um, because what's going to happen is you'll put your door in and then your architrave will go over that. It all gets sorted. that um we'll pop that there we're going to get rid of them boards on monday um that's it basically it's full of plaster boarded now so we'll cut these windows out on monday as well when this wind's dropped a bit as well um and i'll, I'll show you how we're going to put all the back boxes in we're going to use these appleby back boxes it's what we always use we use extra deep ones just so that we've got a bit more maneuver on cable as well but i will show you that on monday right uh, so it's a continuation of day 10 uh continuation because we only spent a couple of hours here saturday so we're back we're going to spend a couple of hours here again so it's day 10. right what i'm going to do i'm going to cut these windows out i'm going to use a hand saw to cut them out um i've marked them up where they're going to be and then we're going to put the back boxes in as well so we're going to have a light switch there we're going to have a brush plate there brush plate double socket double socket internet point double socket at desk height uh, we've got a few spur over there and two double sockets on that wall and then that'll be the inside um, complete and ready for plastering so um, what we'll do I'll cut these windows out and then we're going to show you how we're going to mark up the sockets and um, the back boxes basically and get them cut out right, as well. So you can see the windows there I've actually marked where the sides of the timbers are so they should be roughly where the opening for the window is um, we didn't cut them out the other day two reasons we've forgotten the level um, what were the other reasons, David? Oh, it was really windy, wasn't it? So we sort of decided against that. Um, we just wanted to keep it boarded up, really. So that there's that window. Um, I think I wrote a height down as well, but I can't seem to see it at the moment. Um, David, can you see a height written on that wall anywhere? Oh, that could... No. Uh, it is, yeah. There he's on it, save the day. Right, 1980 should be the bottom of my timber. Oh, still struggling with this stupid finger. Um, 1980 there. So that there will be the head of the window. So you can see the sides. Um, normally, I'd reach for the multi-tool or we'd have cut it out previously before we boarded it. But I wanted to just show you again how we're going to do it with very little tools. Um, so, handsaw, um, we, we know it's there somewhere, so I'm going to get started like that. I should be able to, there, I'm, I'm on the timber there, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut a little hole out of there like that. We've got a hammer out, Davy. Yeah. Pop a little hole in that. Uh, I can see the timber now, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run the saw down the timber. And again, I'm going to find the side of this one there. Just rub it end of the saw. But I found that there now, so 
You can actually feel the side of timber. So that there now is the sort of rough opening for my window. Just going to pop that over there. But you can see now like I've drifted off quite a lot on that one. But on this one's not too bad. Done quite well there. This one I'm way off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tidy it up like that. Just holding my finger on the end of the saw. Pushing it tight to that frame. You want it tidy because what will happen is you'll come to put your window in, you'll have plastered it. Um, and then you'll be knocking plaster off. It'll be going all over the place. All on your new window. Which you don't want. So it's better now to get it perfect. And then all you have to do when you've plastered it is just knock off any bits of plaster that you've left over. So that's that. I'll obviously cut the head out in the same way and then I'm going to cut this one out as well. I'll put it on time lapse, we'll cut them out and then we'll drop on sockets then. Right, we've cut the windows out. Um, we're going to cut the double sockets out now. Now the customer, I, I obviously showed you where these holes went in these um, papyrus. So we transferred the marks on the wall and hopefully, unless we've balls it up, that's where the cutouts are. So that's where our sockets are going to go like that. Now the customer wants the socket as high to that line as possible because what he wants to do is put a floating shelf in there uh, a floating tv unit kind of thing but i know my osb is cut out there so rather than i'm going to try and give myself a little bit of clearance so what i've done there i just put a level line on there yeah and what i'll do now i'm just going to measure up there and it's 367 so that will be the top of the socket line um, which I'm going to transfer around the room. Um, we know our floor's level because that's how we built it. So rather than put a level all the way around the room, I'm just going to measure three, six, seven up in the various places where the sockets are. So let's see if we've got these in the right position. Now, that's can you see the clips on there, David? Look. Yeah. So what happens? I'll show you how they work in a minute. But that there, basically, I need that clip. Have a look down there, David. I need that clip not to hit that OSB. So. I'm going to say, we're going to stick that one there. That hopefully will be the right place. What I've done there, look, I've just put the top of the box on that line, drawn around the box. Again, we don't want them clips to hit each other, so we'll leave a little space in between. Get that on that line there as well. So hopefully when we cut them out now, that will be um, in, in the hole that we've made. So I'm going to use this pad saw. Um, again, we'd normally use the multi-tool, but I picked that up this morning. Um, it was, how much was it? It was like a tenner or something like that from Tool Station. So there we go, I'll pop that in. I can feel there's no resistance there, so I'm definitely not on the OSB. Just work your way along like that. Again, on the bottom there. Pop it in. So, so far so good. I can't feel any OSB that I might, of the papyrus that might be in my way. This side one, now you need a nice clean cut on the side because that's the part that's going to hold the box in. There we go. And again. It's a while since I've used one of these. Oh, feel some up there, Jamie. Oh, that, that's that's um, bad measuring on my behalf. If David can see up there, you can see the OSB there, David, look. Yeah, so I've actually come too far over on the OSB. Right, that initially is a slight problem, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to get out of that problem. So it's not too bad that we've seen it. I'm going to cut this other one out. That must be my measuring, Davey, isn't it? Never mind. This warts and all is where it is. Right, so that one's obviously fine. Let's see if we can get that across. And, no, it's gone down the cavity anyway. Right, so that one's going to sit in there. We're, we're all good with that one. There's clips will work on that one, yeah? But on this other one, they're not going to work because what will happen is that yellow clip's now going to hit on that OSB. Now, there's a couple of ways I can get round that. I can either try and drill that out 
or what else I can do, I can, I'll show you what I'm going to do to get rid of that now. Change my blade in my knife because that's what we need is a nice new blade. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to cut that like that. piece there. What I'm going to do, look, I'm just going to mark which way up it goes because I'm going to pop that back in in a minute. Right, so you can see the OSB watch is causing me a problem there. So what I should be able to do I can't start the pad saw off like I did in the plaster balls because that won't work for me. So where, where far across have I gone? I've gone across. Just give me enough just to get started. removed what we need to do now is pop that bit of plasterboard in there like that Let it fall out and just repair it like that and what will happen then obviously when Tom comes to skim that he will then Put a bit of tape over that, plaster it in, and it will be as good as new. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a couple more in there, because obviously you want it nice and solid so that it doesn't ever crack and move. But I suppose, by my mistake, I've now shown you how to get around it, so that's it's all good. So let's now pull back, it's solid. What I'm going to do with this, it's going to get my pad saw. Push the back out of the box, the box even. And then that will go in there like that. My clip will now work, which it does. And that's my back box in, which will power my TV and whatever is in this unit as well. Um, and this brush plate, that's gonna go in there like that. We're gonna have another one up there, but what I need to do with that now, I need to cut the back off the box. And what I'm gonna do is cut that much off the box there. like that so that, that will all go and then what will happen then i'll do the same on the top one but i'll cut the bottom off so you'll then be able to feed down there through there into there which will then get us power up and down there so what i'm going to do i'm going to get the big angle grinder and i'm going to cut it with that again multi-tool would have been better too but i'm obviously trying to keep down on tools so i'll cut that with angle grinder and then we'll pop another one in up there So the customer's going to have a desk here, so what he's asked for is this double socket there, that'll be the internet point, and he also wants a socket there, that's the desk height there, so we're going to put the socket a little bit higher in case that, you know, you get these plugs now and they've got them moulded bits on the bottom, so you can't have it too, too tight to your desk. So what's happened here, look, you can see there I've actually hit the noggin where the noggin's going to be, so let's put that back in, in there and I'll just show you what happens. So what I want, I want this socket in line with that socket and that's the height the bottom of the socket the customers requested so I drew around there popped my pad saw in realized the noggin was there so let me show you what we've done to get rid of that now um, I've got the chisel in and I've chiseled out as much wood as I can afford to chisel out and then that will allow my socket to go back and also allow my clips to go off but now I need to repair this wall somewhat so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna get a little bit of slate like there just going to pop a screw in that and it'll become clear now why I'm going to pop a screw in that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just 
going to pop that in there and I don't want that to fall down on me. So I'm going to hold it like that and that's why I put that screw there just if I let go of that now it won't fall down it'll just hold into place. So that's that little pat patris in there so I'm going to do exactly the same with this other side now. Um, just pop that screw in there just as a safety so I don't drop it down and it disappears forever. Pop that there like that. Um, might be a bit tight that one actually for the other clips David. Can you see it? What do you reckon? Um, let me put my glasses on because I cannot see how far the screws have gone in. What's your call on that David? Is that going to be too tight for a clip or what? Right, so that's that's my little piece I took out there, yeah. Right, that's where my socket's going. I'll just indicate that so you can see that better. That that there's my box there. So what I want to do now, I'm going to cut them pits there and then replace that bit of board. Obviously, I want these as solid bits rather than breaking them, because that clip needs to go on. So I'm going to score through it quite a few times rather than snapping it. So that'll go on there like that. I shouldn't have actually done that because if that had fallen down all we'd have been in trouble, wouldn't we? Right. Just get that screw in there. Just take your time with it and it'll be right. Right, so that's that side repaired. I do exactly the same with this side now. Put through there a few times. Again, if I snap it, then there's a risk of the plasterboard breaking and the yellow clip won't get a good fix then. Not go on there like that. So nothing's a problem, you know, you can overcome most things. You can see there I sort of messed that up and well, I didn't mess it up, just the socket height where it was required to go went exactly where the noggin was, which obviously ain't going to work for us in this situation. So I had to change that. Right, so that's good. I'm going to pop that in there. There we go. So there you go, that's that now in line with that. We've got past that little obstacle. Um, so what we're going to do, um, the, I'll explain a couple of things why I'm, why, why I'm finishing in a moment. But what we normally do is we'll drill that out there um, to the outside and the cables will be fed through. But Tom will come now and he'll skim all that. What we'll also do as well, insulation tape, David, what do you do with it? Right, so what else you might want to do when you go around these um, is just put a little bit of tape over where the screw goes because what will happen now, your plasterer will come and he'll fill that with plaster and you'll be picking it out then and you'll end up losing the little nut out of it. So a little bit of insulation tape over there will save you a bit of time in the long run. So you can see that hole we've cut at the back of that back box there. Can you see that, David? Yeah. So that, that cable will now be able to drop down and it'll go up through that hole that we've also made in there. So there'll be a brush plate over there. It'll have a little brush and the cables will come out. TV will go on there. So that's it. I'm going to go around and pop the tape on. Um, you can see all the sockets. That's the fuel spur over there. Two double sockets. Consumer unit will go up there. Light switch on wall over there, David. Um, and this is where his desk is going. So he's got a high level uh, PowerPoint there for the top of his desk. And then one below and one for his Cat 6 as well. Obviously, we've cut these out as well. So that is, that's day 10 finished now. Um, I've shown you how to get it out of the ground. I've shown you how to build the walls, put the roof on, get the roof watertight as well. Um, I'm going to end it there now simply because uh, there's a delay on the doors and windows and the cladding is still yet to come as well. So that is basically how to get it out of the ground and structure built with as little tools possible, one man on his own. So David's going to come in now. We're going to talk about the tools we've used as well. Um... I've tried to do it with, with as little tools as possible. So like if you're on a budget, you know, you don't have to be buying a nail gun and a chop saw and stuff like that. So a set of levels. If you keep watching the video and all, there's going to be a little uh, little thing on now. We're going to give them away as well, all the ox tools. So a decent set of levels. Obviously, you need to level your notes. You need to get your walls plumb and stuff like that. 
Couple of hammers. I mean, you don't even really need that, but it's going to be given away. You definitely need some kind of claw hammer. Tape measure is essential. Speed, speed square. Now, we did away with the chop saw, and we used the circular saw, which did the bulk of the work. The, bulk, the circular saw and the speed square did everything. Can't get my words out. String line, essential bit of kit. Some nips to cut your wires with. A handsaw, foam gun insulation and bits like that i mean you can buy a can but it's got a mind of its own and it's a lot of wastage and if you buy that you can use it constantly and just keep cleaning the end off spanners you need to tighten your nuts with some spanners so you'll need a couple of decent adjustable wrenches chalk line not essential but a handy bit of kit again quite cheap a drill set now you'll notice there we've got two different kinds of drills because some muppet forgot to bring me other drills. So you need a normal combination drill. You're going to drill your holes with them, various holes in your 4B3s and other stuff like that. You need an impact driver. You can generally get them as a set. We'll talk about money in a minute as well. Um, angle grinder. You're going to cut your rods off, so you're going to need an angle grinder. Um, again, we'll talk about money. Stanley knife, essential bit of kit. That's the best type of Stanley knife I've ever bought in my life. Um, we continue to buy them and move on with them because they're really good. And the pad saw for cutting out your back boxes. So money-wise, I know that the, the uh, spirit levels, I think they were about 160 quid in the, in, the, um, in the holder and stuff like that. You can get a good combination drill set for about 250 if you look out for a deal. Angle grinder, probably looking, I've seen on Marketplace for 20 quid, 25 quid. It'll do your job at that price. Um, or brand new is probably about 100 quid. Again, if you're going to buy... Um, your impact driver and your combination drill, make sure that you buy it at the same platform and then all the batteries will work. Obviously, that's we've just put that there for visual. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, Adam? Effect. Visual effect. That's not quite right, is it? What's the word when you put something there so people can see it? No. <laughs> right, it's that good. Okay, so these two drills, obviously we've put that one there because we've forgotten ours, but you get a good combination drill set like that, and if you buy that on the same platform, all the batteries will fit. That will do the majority of your work, as will that if you're going to hand nail it. Now, you can get a pass load. I see them on Marketplace, second end, IM350 Plus for about 200 quid normally, something like that, 250, depending on how old it is. Often they're quite temperamental when they come to that age in their life or you could hire one if you've got if you're going to do it in like a quick succession but if you're not it's going to take you weeks and weeks because you're doing weekends and nights it's going to cost you a lot of money to hire one so you might be worth buying one if you buy one brand new they're about 500 quid you'll definitely sell it for 300 plus and it'll be cheaper than hiring it over that length of time or you can go down the road of hand nailing which you've seen me do and it's doable uh just watch your fingers right speed square that was i think that one was 17 pound but you can get them really cheap for about seven quid as well string line three quid hand saw six quid foam gun 20 odd pound um Tape measures, that's a pretty decent tape measure, I suppose. But, you know, a five-metre one will do. Yeah, how much is a five-metre tape measure, Adam, these days? Anywhere from like 10 to 20 quid, aren't they? Yeah, 10 to 10 20 quid. I know they're about 20-odd pounds. Um, but, again, they're all going to be free. We're going to talk about them in a minute. A pair of adjustable spanners, probably a tenner each or something like that, are they? Yeah. Uh, Stanley knife, I think, they're, I think they're about a tenner as well. String line, Adam, any ideas? 12 quid. I know that was £9 because I bought that the other day brand new. So I think, on top of my head there, without doing the maths, you're probably looking five, £600. Pounds. Or you can get it a lot cheaper if you've got a marketplace. And once you build, you can get it float and get it sold off. So that's your build. Um, let's talk about what we're going to give away. All the ox stuff is going to be free. So I'll put that up there. You can see what I'm giving away. Adam, will you pass us that bag in for the ox levels, mate? So you've got three levels. You've got a lump hammer which hasn't seen much work at all. You've got a framing hammer which has seen plenty of work. It's still in good condition. They get a lot of life out of that yet. Um, obviously the levels that come with that bag as well, which is a handy bit of kit. Two tape measures. I said that wouldn't really last the build. It's not done too bad. You'll still get a lot of use out of that. That one there, we've not even used it, so it's as it was, it's just a bit dirty. So we're gonna give away that full ox kit. It's free. Right. Well, I seen somebody else this morning, um, you'll probably know them if you are, they're doing this thing for Ox. Now, our giveaways are generally better than the companies who supply the giveaways. Um, two Christmases ago, we gave away a completely free of charge. Um, I'm going to give away a DeWalt combination drill set when I reach 70,000 on YouTube. So if you're not already subscribing, you need to hit the subscribe button because I'm going to give that away as well. And I'm going to give away this set. It was approximately £250. I think a little bit less than that, but by the time I put postage on it, it will cost me that. I will post it anywhere in the UK. Right. How are we going to give it away? On Instagram, 
you have to follow me on Instagram. You have to like the post that I put on Instagram as well, giving this away. So you need to follow, you need to like, you need to share, and you need to comment. The comment is, I want to know how many screws have gone in to this build. And when I say screws, I mean Jiprock, plasterboard screws, whatever you want to call them, what we've used to plasterboard this room. Davey is going around and he's going to circle everyone as he counts them so he doesn't miss one out. Okay? That's what's going to happen. So Davey's going to pan around the room now. He's going to let you have a little look of how many screws. So you've got your ceiling. You've got your walls. It's a three metre by three metre. I do put in more screws than normally what I require. I don't think you possibly can pause this and see all the screws, can you? I don't know if that would be possible, will it, David? I wouldn't have thought so. Go a little bit faster so they can't do that. <laughs> right, okay, so that is it. If you want that aux gear, you need to count them screws and you need to comment, like, and follow. And I will pick the person who is either spot on or closest to the actual amount of screws. And I'll post that anywhere in the UK, okay? One more thing before I go. Um, screws we used. So we used, um, we used the 250 long screws to screw the 4 freeze together. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam and David, yeah? So we use the 250 screws, yeah? We use the twist nails to put the joist hangers on. We use the 60 mil nails to put the floor down. 60 mil screws, sorry, to put the floor down. We use five minute glue to glue the floor. What's up, David? Uh, um, so that was the floor done then, yeah? Right, and then we did the walls. We used 90 mil smooth nails to nail all the walls together. We used 100 mil torque screws to actually do a little bit of fixing with the walls. That's the walls, isn't it? We used 63 mil ring cut nails on the OSB 11 mil. Right, so that's the walls, that's the floor. Roof, again, we use 90 mil smooth. When I put the roofing boards on, we use 63 mil ring cut nails as well. Um, what else is there? Slate battens, 90 mil nails, Adam, yeah? And then we used 100 mil roofing, sh roofing screws, the torque ones, what are they called? Yeah, the tech screws to screw the steel on as well and screw the OSB to the steel. Um, we used plasterboard screws to put the plasterboard on, which you're going to count and let me know how many you think there is. Um, is there any more type of fixing done? Polytops. Polytops, yeah, we used polytops to put the fascia and soffit on. And, and that, I think that is it. So literally, very little tools, very little variation of screws. I can't, I, 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 I've never been the person for going around with like a box with like different types of screws because it's just, I'm guaranteed in your life you're going to drop it. Yeah, and you might as well just bin it then. <laughs> right, so um, that is it. That is day 10 complete. Please go over to Instagram and like and follow and leave a comment because all that gear will be coming to you. Yeah, it is second hand, but it's barely been used and you'll, you'll get a lot of life out of that, to be fair, wouldn't you, Adam? It's not, it's not a bad little kit. The levels are absolutely spot on. Can't fault them. Um, I've got a massive advantage to win it. I've got a car advantage. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let me tell you what I'm going to do. Davey and Adam are going to count the screws. They're going to tell me how many screws there is, and then I'm going to alter the quantity so there is no frauding going on whatsoever. Okay? Yeah, we've had a guess. So don't show them the guess, Davey, because it'll, it'll get people too close to what the actual thing is. So that's it. Um, we're, we're going to pull off this job now because I've got a few things going on in my life as well that I need to deal with. Um, and I will be back. I'll, I'll put the doors in, I'll do the skirting boards, and I'll do the floor. Um, I might even paint it as well, because I think the customer wants us to paint this as well. But you will see the end finish on this, so it, thanks for watching. I know a lot of people have liked this series of videos. I might do something similar again, but I won't be doing it on my own, because I'm too old for that. <laughs> I am tired, yeah. Um, but there you go, 10 days um, on your own. It's more than doable. Um, build packs, of course, build packs are for sale. You've 13 different sizes, the link's in the description. Um, and that's all you need, and you can do it just with a little bit of um, a little bit of know-how, which I'm happy to give you on my videos and my build pack, and you know a little bit of enthusiasm, and you'll be able to build yourself a garden room, no problem at all. Okay, so please like and subscribe, and I will see you very shortly. Thank you.